You're watching FNN, the Fuck News Network. This program contains subject matter and language that may be disturbing to some viewers. Does your husband do a lot of the cooking over your house? He does all of it. <laughs> he loves it. Oh, well, uh, ain't you a little afraid of what people could think? You mean that I'm a lazy wife? No, that he's a fag. <laughs> Viewer discretion is advised. Smack him a gall. Smack him a gob. It's time for the only news that matters, and I want to thank Tim Bream and Allison Noto for the FNN logos that started this all off. I also want to thank Jason Morris's daughter, Danny, for the Schmack a Magab intro. I loved it. Thank you so much. If you want to send a Schmack a Magab intro, please send it to this email right here. And I will put it up in the order I receive it. All right, so what do you say we get into the only news that matters? Former Megadeth bassist David Elson says he is pursuing revenge porn charges against the person who leaked the very private video. In a statement he says, recently a private video was illegally posted on the internet and false allegations were made against me. The actions in the video were between two consenting adults and were recorded without my knowledge. I am working with Scottsdale Police Department in their investigations into charges regarding revenge pornography to be filed against the person who posted this video. Also, my lawyers are preparing a defamation lawsuit to be filed against this person. This person will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Look, I'm, I'm very non-biased on here. I don't know if he's guilty for the charges this guy put on him or if he's not, but if he's not, then I hope this guy does get persecuted to the fullest extent of the law because he pretty much ruined this guy's life. I mean, it was idiotic what he did, but do you really think when he was doing the five knuckle shuffle on that video that he knew it would leak? He would have kept it in his pants. He knows what he did was stupid and wrong, and but I also think if this guy's innocent of all these charges that this dude put out against him, that he was a pedophile and all this stuff, then I think he should be persecuted and suffer for putting that up online. Only time will tell the truth, or maybe it won't. Who knows? But in related news, Jason Newstead is not joining Megadeth, his wife says. Everybody, I've seen so many people online saying, oh, they got to get Newstead, they got to get Newstead. I remember Jason Newstead just a month ago said, He's not able to play uh, thrash or with Metallica anymore. He doesn't have, you know, the, the energy to do the Metallica music. And you know, Megadeth is much more complicated. So I guess everybody that wants Jason back uh, missed that story. I think Megadeth needs to find a bass player that's easily offended and part of the woke movement. That way, that person will fit right into Megadeth these days. All right, next story, Bathory included into Swedish Music Hall of Fame. That is awesome. I love Bathory. I, I, I think they're, his, they're a historic metal band. And, uh, and I love how there's a ABBA museum there. <laughs> I love ABBA and I love Bathory. So uh, I, I love Sweden, man. I think Thomas Porthorne and Forsberg deserve acknowledgement. As long as it's not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, because that place sucks. All right, next story. David Lee Roth has released a new song called Giddy Up. The track, which also features original artwork by the Van Halen singer, can be heard on YouTube now. It's called Giddy Up, and is one of the five songs included in last fall's The Roth Project, an online comic narrated by Roth with music from John Five on guitar and bass, Greg Bissonette on drums, Brett Tuggle on keyboards and Louis Conte on percussion. The 17th chapter comic also includes four other songs Roth co-wrote with John Five and recorded several years ago at Henson's Recording Studios in Hollywood, California. Some of those songs is Somewhere Over the Rainbow Bar and Grill, Alligator Pants, Low Res Sunset, and Manda Bala. 
Uh, I heard the song and I really liked it. You know, it's different. It's not hard rock. I, I love to hear some more hard rock with Dave, but I loved his voice on it. You know, his voice is not that good, but with Studio Magic, he sounds great. And the lyrics are awesome. Classic Dave. Absolutely loved it. And the song I didn't mind. But I hope those other songs are much heavier because I love when he does the heavy stuff. All right, next story. Bruce Kulick released a video, a little documentary, 20 minute documentary about his brother Bob who passed away one year ago. And I watched it and I thought it was awesome. And I didn't realize how much this guy did in his life as far as music goes. A lot of, a lot of projects, even going way back to the early days, the, you know, the 60s, 70s, and the Cafe Wa where he saw Jimi Hendrix play and a host of other people he played with and his solo projects. And I really love that Blackthorn album. And they played a snippet of the band he was in called Skull. It sounded awesome and I'd never heard it. So I got to look into Skull. Anyway, rest in peace, Bob Kulik, man. That was a great documentary that you could see on YouTube. All right, next story. Rob Halford has revealed that he would love to write and record a new song with the Japanese pop metal group Baby Metal. I've seen some Baby Metal stuff on YouTube, and oh my God, Eric, those kids, man, give them less sugar. They're too hyperactive. And the music does nothing for me. But it's Rob Halford, and he can do whatever the hell he wants. So more power to him. I don't think I'm going to like it. I'll be shocked if I like it, but... I want Rob Hoffer to be happy and do whatever the fuck he wants because he has given me so much joy in the soundtrack of my life that I don't care if he wants to do I didn't like that two project he did, but he's Rob Hoffer. He's allowed. I hope that when he came out of the closet, he had a smorgasbord of cock and enjoyed himself immensely. I, you know, can you imagine backstage in the 80s at Judas Priest shows? You'd have more picks to get a groupie with the singer being a gay man. And I love that. I hail the gay men. More females for the straight men. All right, before I go into the final story, I would like to make a little public service announcement. Uh, last week, I got a couple comments saying, what? No Paul Stanley? Now, you know, not every week you're going to get Paul Stanley. He's got to do something newsworthy. Or else, what am I going to do? Just like, hey, uh, next story. Paul Stanley of Kiff. All right, next story. Now, you know, come on, man. Some of you love to beat on a dead horse. I'm only going to talk about Paul Stanley of Kiff when he does something newsworthy. Like the final story. Paul Stanley of Kiff took a pot shot at a review who wrote a negative report about KISS 47 years ago. He shared a picture of a clipping from a Seattle Daily Times dated May 27, 1974, written by Patrick McDonald after a concert two days earlier. The part that most interested Stanley read, I hope the four guys who make up the group, whose names don't matter, are putting money away for the future, the near future, because KISS won't be around long. Which, you know, before I say what Paul said, that's hilarious. I mean, boy was he wrong. And I know there's a lot of KISS haters that watch my channel, because I do get several comments, you know, weekly about how KISS sucks and this and that. I really don't care what anybody thinks. I love KISS. Sure, not all the albums. I hate Crazy Nights, Hot in the Shade, Sonic Boom. Not a big fan of everything they've done, but but the albums that I like, actually, I fucking love, and I'm proud to say it. Even though I will admit that I do cringe at a lot of Kiss tarts. They're the worst. All right, so back to the story. So Paul Stanley said this. This grows funnier every year. And to those gentlemen who wrote this prophecy in 1974, I hope you were putting away your money for the future. It's not easy being an unemployed critic. Yeah, and it's also not easy being a frontman that can't sing. 
Ooh, I went there. Take that, Kiss Tarts. How do you like those apples? So that's it for the news, my friends. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. If you'd like to donate, I got a PayPal in the description below. And check out my podcast, Vieira Ball, and the Rock and Metal Combat Podcast. And I will be at Rock and Pod this year in August in Nashville. So if anybody in the Nashville area, come to Rock and Pod. Let's hang out. Come up to me. I'm a really cool dude, and I'm funny. I'll make you laugh. And anybody that's not from Nashville, fly in. I'll make you laugh harder than the people that live in Nashville. So stay frosty, my friends, and smack them a gob. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu to you ladies of Spain. <laughs>